This video will help you understand basic networking for connecting to IP cameras. So let's say you have this IP camera right here and that you're looking to connect to it from your PC or from your video management system so you can view it live and record it. How do you connect to it? Well the first step that we're going to want to do is when we're connecting to a camera is we're going to look for a discovery tool. So each manufacturer has their own discovery tool. They call it different names, utilities, finders, but generally you'll either find it on a CD or you can find it on the website. So you'll see here this one manufacturer calls it the utility suite. You can list and manage devices, etc. Another manufacturer calls it their camera management tool. This is efficient management tool, blah, 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 for connecting to access cameras and setting their IP addresses. Here you'll see yet another manufacturer. They call it a little bit differently. This is their 100 software, which also finds cameras. Then you'll see yet another manufacturer calls it their uh, IQ or their camera finder, locate cameras on your network. And yet a fifth manufacturer calls it a device utility, and we did a search for this. Um, so some of these are harder to find, but first thing you should do, what's the manufacturer of the IP camera? Find the camera discovery tool, usually included on a CD, or you can find it on the internet for free. Install that, and then you're going to take a look there. So let's take an example of one of the camera finders. So I'm going to pull up one that we have here. We're going to connect to it. So it's going to connect and it's going to look for cameras on the network. All right, so let's look at what's going on here. So you can see there's a search button we could search for, but it automatically tries to look for cameras. For instance, you can see that there are a number of cameras that listed, but all of them have a red X. And you'll see all of these cameras, they list their IP address. And you'll notice that the IP address is four parts. We're going to key in on the first three parts, which are, tend to be the most important in terms of networking or connection. But you'll see here the IP address, or like the physical address where it's located, is 192.168.2. So how do we know if we're connected to it? Well, there's a very common tool that people use, and you can access it by pulling up a command prompt. You can type shorthand CMD on a Windows computer, and you'll come up to this command, and then you'll type in ping. So people use ping even in common vernacular, and right, it's about pinging, so I'll ping you later, meaning basically I'll connect to you later. So what we'll do is we'll ping an IP address. So this is the IP address that we had before, and we're going to ping it. One little handy thing that I like to do is I always like to use dash T. Dash T will just try over and over again. And this comes in handy when you can't connect to the camera because sometimes you might be able, not be able to connect at first and then a few minutes later once the camera powers up or you plug in a cable, it will connect. So you're seeing right now the request is timing out and that's bad news. It means that for whatever reason, my computer can't connect to the IP camera. So. Now we need to figure out what's going on. And one of the most common ways to troubleshoot is another command that you have on Windows. And we'll pull up another one and we'll do ipconfig. And ipconfig gives you basic networking information about your PC. So we'll show you over here with ipconfig that there's information on the wireless LAN adapter and the Ethernet or basically our hardwire adapter. And it's giving us information about what the IP address is on our computer. You'll notice that on our, on our wired uh, connection, we're 192.168.1.10. Now let's compare that to what we're pinging. And we'll go over here. And let me pull over here. You'll notice that we're trying to ping 192.168.2.4. Let me switch over here to give you an easier view. And you'll see here this 2.144. The key issue that's going on here is that this they are on different networks. For instance, this is dot one and this is dot two. That third position, that third octet, generally needs to be the same. So the last one can be different. It could be one, you know, dot one forty four at the end, and we could be dot ten. That's fine. But the next to last and the first three generally need to be the same. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go in now and we're going to change an IP address. This happens from time to time, especially if the IP addresses are not the same. So we're going to go in and we can go. There's a couple of ways you can do this on Windows, but we could go into our network and sharing center, 
and then we get to change the settings. So we want to change the settings on our network adapter. And this here is our physical one. We're going to click on properties. And this part is really common. You can find this even when you sort of do an internet search, like how to change my IP address. It's the basic instructions here. But you'll see here that we have, as we said before, this is a 1.10. And we said the problem is we need to be on the 2 network, the 192.168.2. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this to 2. And we're going to save this in a moment. But I'm going to do one other thing just to show you what's going on here. We're going to ping 192.168.2.144. Okay, I'm going to put this up here and I'm going to ping this. And of course, we're not going to connect yet, but I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to click Close, and then I'm going to close out here, and then we're going to be on the same network, and we can show you that we are on the same network. You'll see the last reply came in positive, and so let me do it again. So now you see that we're getting replies. This reply from the IP address you're playing, that's a good sign. That means we have a connection. Now let me go back to ipconfig, which is what we were looking at earlier. And now you'll notice that our local area connection it used to be 1.10, it's 2.10 now. So we successfully changed our IP address, and because of that, now we are able to successfully ping to the camera. This is good news. The next step, what you want to do is, and we'll close this out because we've established our connection, is that we want to go to a web browser. The safest choice is generally to pull up Internet Explorer and type in the camera's IP address. So you'll see here that this is the 192.168.2.144 and our camera is connected and you can see that this is live and we're connecting via the web browser. So you could set up, you could just watch the camera through it, but typically once you've gotten to this point, you're connected to the camera, you can configure the resolution and frame rate and do more advanced things. You'll also want to connect it to a video management system. So that's probably the very last step that someone typically does. So for instance, we'll bring up a video management system and you'll see here in this one VMS, there is an IP cameras configuration section. And again, now you see our 192.168.2.144. And here it is in the setup. You'll put in the username and password, the IP address. The port is almost typically 80 except for advanced users. And you'll go ahead and click apply. And then let's go ahead and enable it. So when we enable it, it's going to see here that the status is connecting. And so it will momentarily connect. OK, we're seeing it connecting. And you'll see it's pulling up information, the MAC address, the firmware. So it's updating the status. Now the status is connected. And if we go over here, we will then, let's take a look here. The camera is connected. It is the 144. And let's double click on it. And there you go. You see the same video stream now on the VMS. And then, of course, you'd go on to more advanced things about how to types of recording, continuous versus motion based recording, how long you want to record, et cetera. But this gives you the fundamental workflows from going from discovering the camera, making sure the networks are connected, pinging it, and then bringing it into the browser, and then finally the VMS system. Thank you.